Three months into its war, Ukraine claiming a major blow against Russia. Ukrainian special forces say the commander of Russia's Black Sea Fleet was killed in last week's attack on Sevastopol in Crimea. Let's get you straight to CNN's Frederick Pleitkin, who is in eastern Ukraine. And we are just getting word of this. What do we know at this point? Mm. Yeah, this comes from Ukrainian military intelligence, Becky, and they're saying that in that strike on the Black Sea Fleet headquarters, which of course happened uh, in the early morning hours of this past Friday, and that really hit that uh, d um, headquarters of the Black Sea Fleet there, the Ukrainians are saying that 34 senior officers, as they put it, of the Black Sea Fleet were killed, including the commander of the Black Sea Fleet, who's an admiral called Viktor Sokolov. The Ukrainians uh, are saying that he was killed in that strike. Of course, you'll recall that after that strike took place, there was some video that uh, emerged on social media, the Black Sea Fleet headquarters, very close actually to the town of Sevastopol, to the center of the town of Sevastopol. Many people, of course, had their phones out, may have been filming. Uh, it certainly seemed as though there were cruise missiles that hit that Black Sea Fleet headquarters. The Russians at that point in time only acknowledged that one Russian soldier had, was missing, as was presumably killed. They did acknowledge, as they put it, that the historic headquarters of the Black Sea Fleet uh, had been hit, but had not said that officers had been killed. Now, we do have to say, Becky, that at this point in time, uh, the Ukrainians have not put forward any evidence uh, to, to, to firm up the fact that uh, Admiral Sokolov may have been killed. It's very difficult, obviously, to confirm that. We ourselves have not been able to independently confirm that. We have been trying to get in touch with the Russian Defense Ministry about this. And earlier today, there was a call with journalists by the spokesman for the Kremlin, Dmitry Peskov, where this was also not talked about. So right now, we don't have any sort of confirmation or indications about this from the Russians. Nevertheless, of course, a big claim by the Ukrainians. And it came as there were a range of strikes on civilian Sevastopol and the area around Sevastopol in this past week by the Ukrainians, them, of course, hitting a submarine that was in the dry dock there in Sevastopol, also hitting a landing ship called the Minsk, uh, which uh, was outside uh, of, uh, of the port of Sevastopol. The Ukrainians also saying there that a lot of sailors were killed on that ship as they claimed that it was about to set sail uh, for a mission. So certainly the Ukrainians this past week putting pressure on the Russian Black Sea Fleet, putting pressure on the Russians in occupied Crimea, now coming up with this big claim. But again, at this point in time, all of this not confirmed, Becky. Fred, overnight, Russia hit Odessa with a barrage of drone strikes. Is it clear what the extent of the damage is mm. at this point? Well, it seems to be pretty extensive damage, but it's unclear how big a hit this was uh, against the Ukrainians. Of course, Odessa, much like Sevastopol, also a port town. So the Ukrainians are saying they believe that this was retaliation for the Ukrainians hitting the port of Sevastopol this past Friday. In fact, the Ukrainians calling this pathetic retaliation in their words. They say that in total, the Russians used 14 cruise missiles and 19 drones for this attack. The Ukrainians say they were able to shoot down uh, those 19 drones, but they said the cruise missile part of the attack in itself was very complex. 12 of those cruise missiles were caliber cruise missiles. Those are cruise missiles that can maneuver but travel at a subsonic speed. The Ukrainians say they were able to shoot down 11 of those 12 cruise missiles, some of them in the vicinity of Odessa, but they said that two of the cruise missiles that were used Used were Onyx cruise missiles. Those travel supersonic, and those appear to have hit some of the some of the targets there. The Ukrainians are saying that grain facilities were hit in the port of Odessa, and they also say that a very large hotel was hit, which is very close to the seafront. The Ukrainians, for their part, saying that that hotel hasn't been in use for years and so therefore was empty. The Russians have been saying that they believe there might have been military inside that hotel. But again, the Ukrainians are saying that they believe that what the Russians are doing is a symbolic strike as retaliation for the fact that the Ukrainians hit the Russian Black Sea Fleet headquarters in Sevastopol. Nevertheless, the damage extensive there in, in uh, Odessa, two people have so far been confirmed killed by the Ukrainians, Becky. I want to bring in CNN military analyst, former commanding general for the U.S. Army Europe, Lieutenant General Mark Hurtling. General, thank you so much for being with us right now. The news that an admiral, the commander of the Black Sea Fleet, might have been killed in that strike. And actually, we have some video of that strike that I can show right here. What would that do to the Russian efforts in Crimea? Good morning, John. It's a pretty big deal. Uh, what I'd suggest is it's not only the commander of the fleet, but the targeting process that the Ukrainians are using, where you garner intelligence and then decide what targets you're going to hit and then strike it, is the important part of this. Because it wasn't just the admiral killed, 
It was the admiral killed inside of his Black Sea Fleet headquarters in Sevastopol, where others were killed, as you just mentioned. Uh, um, uh, probably a great many of his staff, Ukraine estimates between 34 and 37 uh, other naval officers were killed there. But this is going to disrupt the operations within the Black Sea. The other thing that's important is the fact that in order to hit this headquarters, the Ukrainian forces also hit a telecommunications node uh, within the Black Sea Fleet. So that's the ability for the intelligence to pass to different ships uh, from the headquarters, as well as uh, really just destroying the command and control infrastructure of a major element of the Russian Navy. You have to be able to hit it, and you have to know he's there when you are hitting it to have that kind of success. General, you're a tank guy, uh, so it is with great pleasure that I get to ask you about this. Uh, Ukrainian leader Volodymyr Zelensky says that the first U.S. Abrams tanks have arrived now in country. What is the difference that these tanks can make? Well, they're, they're in my view, John, and, and I say this with a little trepidation because I'm sure the Germans would debate me on this. It is the best tank in the world. It has the capability of high speed, great deal of armor protection, uh, tremendous firepower from the 120 millimeter gun. Uh, it has the ability to range very far. Uh, it also has great crew protection. It can hit targets it aims at, at close to uh, 3,000 meters plus, which is tremendously important, but it also has machine guns, uh, several machine guns on the vehicle that can uh, engage troop targets. So what you're talking about is a very capable armored system. Uh, it is tough to train on. The Ukrainians have been doing that for the last several months, as promised. Uh, Secretary of Defense Austin said the Ukraine forces are going to get 31 of these tanks, which is the equivalent of a Ukrainian armored battalion, and it will contribute to the ground warfare, uh, especially in, in the ongoing offensive that Ukraine is conducting. So 31 of them, what do you do with them? And I have the map here up of sort of the counteroffensive here, and you can see very small areas of yellow, which the Ukrainians have been able to take back. Do you throw these 31 tanks right to the front immediately? Or because you have relatively limited capacity, do you be careful with them? Well, I, I'm, I hesitate to answer that question, John. I know what I would do with them. I would wait for the counteroffensive that's ongoing now in, a, in several different directions to show some strength and breakthrough operations. Then you, you would use these tanks uh, as part of a combined arms team of infantry and artillery and air defense and engineers to continue to assault uh, to the key positions or the key objectives that Ukraine has determined that are the final point of this, breaking supply lines, going after troop forces. But in my view, these are best used as part of a mass of a combined arms team with a mobile armored punch. Uh, once you find out where you wanna go, once you find out the areas have been cleared of mines, which have been plaguing the Ukrainian forces over the last several months, you would throw these in in a combined arms team and have that kind of armored punch that is needed to break through and continue the assault. Because they can move very quickly if they're supplied and maintained over an attack route. So wait for the opportunity, then deploy. General Mark Hurtling, thank you so much for being with us today.